Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed today to be bringing God's truth to you. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we make requests for our daily bread? Like, doesn't matter where you are, let me tell you this truth. God just is not powerful enough to produce or to give you your daily bread. He is so willing to do it. Praise God. Now, actually, he's not just willing. He insists on doing it. So why are people hungry? See, because they are not connecting to him. You need to understand something. Well, I'll share that with you after we, 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 we make requests to our daily bread. So release your faith right now as you join me to make this declaration. Say, Father, I demand right now from you my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, listen. I was saying God doesn't just want to. He insists. You see, people don't understand Remember, we're talking about Jesus being the true light. And our text is from John chapter 8 and verse 12. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Let that sink in your heart. He didn't say, I am a light of the world or in the world. Say, I am the light of the world. Meaning anything that is not coming from me, it's only taking place in darkness. So sometimes, you know, I have seen preachers who, who try to compare God's children with uh, people of the world. So you hear, you hear preachers say, upon all your titan, you have not become a billionaire like someone like Bill Gates or they mention other billionaires. Now, that's not only insulting, that is major ignorance that they are displaying. You see, when people talk like that, you just begin to understand their mind that these people don't understand the ways of God. It's the truth. And, and, and when we talk like this, we are not kind of giving an excuse, you know, for the way real believers think. I want you to understand something here. People don't understand the role we play in the world. People don't understand the role unbelievers play in the world. If you do, there are certain thoughts you will not voice out. Telling Christians that they are not doing well because they are not the richest people in the world it's wrong it's wrong in the sense that there are few times that god have blessed and, and allowed um, godly people to become so rich for example job was an example now most of these men you call if god takes them through the process that he takes men that he raises, I bet you none will stand. You see, you don't know. Now, now, money is the easiest thing to get. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. So why are people not getting it? Many people don't like the easy things. Many people just like hard work, you know, hard labor. So, but then, if you want to get money God's way, there is a process he will take you through. Now, we saw what he took Job through. Job was a rich man. He didn't steal. He didn't do wrong to get money. He was a wealthy man. But the Bible also says he was perfect before God, meaning Job was a man of faith. But then, God still came to Job, looked at what he had, and wasn't pleased with what he had. Say, so God wasn't pleased? Yes, he wasn't. 
You see, because there is the kind, there is a quality of substance that God gives. And also, even though you are godly, you can make substance in the world. David spoke about people who prosper in the world. David spoke about them. And you remember what David said? He says, look, I almost lost it when I considered the prosperity of the wicked. He said, I almost lost it. Because even in the days of David, there were still things like that happening. Praise God. In fact, David's only said he called them the wicked, meaning there was things that he had looked at that made him qualify them as the wicked. He says, look, they were, they were rising so high and it looked like, though, in fact, the wicked have said to themselves, God does, doesn't really care. But then David said something. He says, until I entered the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. You see that now? So God looked at Job. He was a perfect man. He did everything right. And then he was a wealthy man. And God says, look, I've got to clean this guy out. I want to bless him. But before I bless him, I have to take away everything he's made. I've got to take away everything he has. And when God says everything, he meant everything. Now, now you know the story of Job. You see, Job was not the cause of his problem. Satan was not the cause of Job's problem. You want to know the truth? God was the cause of Job's problem. Praise God. He was the one that asked the devil, have you considered my servant Job? Come on now. What will God think Satan will consider Job for? What good thing do you think Satan will consider Job for? So when God probed and asked the devil, what have you considered my servant Job? God was setting up the, the journey for what he wanted to do in Job's life. I've said these things many times and believe me, in your journey in life, Satan has a role to play. And if you're wise, you will learn to allow him play his role in your life. There is no one who's gone through that journey with God that Satan hasn't. Now, now, you know, I was sharing this with someone recently and I said, listen, and it's very true. Satan has never been scared of the anointing. Never. Why? Because he's operated in it. <laughs> Have you thought about that? The guy has operated in the anointing. Most likely the kind that you have not even smelt. So your anointing has never intimidated him. Understand that. And you will know peace for your life, praise God. Your anointing has never intimidated. In fact, you know, people say, when I'm so anointed, the devil will never come close. Who told you that? The more anointed you are, the more you attract the devil. He is too close to you. <laughs> now, he's, the problem it's not that the devil is too close to us. That's never a problem. Because the sea, no matter how close he is to us, he cannot touch. See, he understands that principle. Touch not my anointed. He understands it very well. So he's not going to break it because he fears what will happen to him. Praise God. So do you know what he does? He tries because he understands how the, the anointing works. So what he does is, this, and, and let me tell you this truth. If you're a preacher and you love to function under the anointing. Now you see, thank you Holy Spirit. Learn this and learn this. Most times, especially preachers, they, 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 they walk into this era blindly. Because you like to prove that you are anointed, <laughs> you better watch it to know when pride begins to come in. Now, it takes the grace of God to walk in the anointing. But you see, if you don't learn to live a balanced life, oh, Satan is going to make a mess of you. And the funny thing is you will not know when he's operating. You will think you're free from him. 
until the day you will wake up and realize that your life is a mess. Now, nobody may notice. Only you will know. And it's amazing that when these things are happening, you will just think everything is going well. Everything is going fine. God is using me and, and, and things are happening. I pray, I pray you don't wake up many years <laughs> and realize that you are in a mess. When you realize that, hey, I function so much in the anointing, but then I, I have not raised my children very well. I function so much in the anointing. I have not built a proper relationship with my wife. And then you realize at that time, you become so lonely that you don't know how to function anymore. Everybody have gotten used to you operating in your cloud nine. And so they've left you. You see, the Bible says, see a man that fears the Lord. His end is peace. Now, when the Bible talks about the fear of the Lord, you know, it's not, oh, I'm too afraid. No, no, no. The fear of the Lord simply means carefully observing to do everything the way he wants you to do it. That's what the fear of the Lord is. Being careful to do things exactly the way God wants you to do it. So you say you fear the Lord so you don't do nothing. You don't fear the Lord. You remember that man, that those, those servants that were given different talents and then the one who went to bury his talents. And he says, I, I know you. You're a hard man. You see, so rather he was, he was actually saying in essence that because I fear you, I went to bury this talent. Because I don't want to hear stories that I invested in and got um, wasted. He says, I fear that. So I bury this so that when you come and ask, and then the master says, you're a fool. So some people fear God and they don't do anything. Some fear God and they overdo things. <laughs> it's God. The fear of the Lord simply means doing exactly what God wants you to do. That will be the result of your godly fear. So I was telling you this about the anointing. So you're walking in it and without realizing that knowing the master is the most important thing in life. Knowing him. You see, because knowing him will make you walk in the light. There are people who function in the anointing, yet they don't know him. Oh, yes. You remember Jesus even said that Jesus is the light, remember? Now he said, on that day, many will come and say, oh, we healed the sick. We did many mighty works in your name. Now, when they say in your name, they are actually referring to the anointing. See that now? We did all this because it's by the anointing we do all those things. So we did all those things in your name, or rather we did all those things by your anointing. So if you were not approving of it, why would you release the anointing? Now, that's the mistake a lot of people make. <laughs> Praise God. That's the mistake a lot of people make. Functioning in the anointing doesn't mean you know him. Knowing him, I'll tell you how you know you know him. When he begins to release his wisdom to you. Because you can never fully walk in the light if you don't know him. The anointing doesn't make you walk in the light. There are men who walk in the anointing, but their finances is messed up. There are men who walk in the under. When I say messed up, they receive money. They, they just don't know how to do. I mean, you understand what I'm talking about? There are those who function in the anointing, yet every other thing about their life is in a mess. 
Yeah, that's the truth. But when you know him, he guides you step by step and bring you to the place where you walk in his light. Now, when you begin to operate in his light, you realize that you're beginning to function in an uncommon wisdom, even for life. Not because you are too smart. Now, that's how you know. You know yourself. So not because you are too smart, but it just happens that all your decisions are right. You see that now? Because you have learned not to take the decisions yourself. You have learned his ways. What did he say? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. That's what Jesus said. Very powerful statement. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And what's going to happen to you? You will find rest for your soul. Now, the more you walk with him, the more you begin to realize that life is not as struggling, you know, or life is not, no, so life is a struggle. No, you begin to realize that our struggling doesn't make sense. Why? Because you begin to realize that the major things you got or accomplish, they didn't come by struggle. You will notice that the things you struggle to get, there was something not right about it. But the real things that you have gotten that stayed, they didn't come by your struggle. Even praying. Sometimes, you know, people think, prayer people, for example, you think, you know, we, we make it by prayer. I said it like that deliberately. Praise God. You know what I'm talking about. But then you now get to realize that all that noise is not what produces the results. You get to realize that. Now, that realization is knowing him. Because you, you, maybe there was a time you used to think that, ah, if I pray 10 hours every day, then, you know, for example, you know, there are, there are, and, and, and I say this with all, um, with all due respect. There are preachers who feel that the more, if they pray more, then they will stay out of sin. Now, now, at the beginning stage, that may look okay. But then, if you stay there for a long time, then you will not know when you have transited into living in fear. And guess what normally happens? Such people eventually end up making those mistakes. The Lord taught me this many years ago. You know, every point in your life, you, you have to come to that place where you sit with the Lord. Now, this is what every child of God should be doing. Sit with the Lord and let him teach you. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. So, many years ago, I was asking the Lord. I said, Lord, how will a man live free from sin? How will a man live free from sin? Now, because I know. Everything everybody have told you, there will be some truth in it. But the more you try to do it, you get to an obstacle. Yeah, that's the truth. And then you now get to realize that most times, it's always more than what people teach. So I asked the Lord and the Lord said this to me. He said, <laughs> Now, I would say that Maybe sometimes it's the power of his word that changes you. And not necessarily um, the fact that you heard something. So he said this to me. The day you start taking responsibility, that day you become free from sin. <laughs> oh. As I'm laughing, that when it dawned on me, that's how I had a good laugh. And time is up. Praise <laughs> God. Now I'll continue from here tomorrow because this is, this is very important. I need to share this with you. Father, I pray for everyone watching. Your spirit, oh God, is resting on us. 
molding us into that which you have ordained for us to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.